Once again, a major city that struggles with rampant crime is forbidding police officers from doing what they do, tracking down bad guys. Chicago police officers will no longer be allowed to chase people on foot if they're only being investigated for minor offenses. Now, Chicago is a major crime problem. So far this year, robberies, burglaries, motor vehicle thefts, aggravated batteries, sexual assaults, all up from last year. And anyone in law enforcement will tell you that often the bigger crimes are solved by investigating the smaller ones. People typically run away for a reason. But now Chicago officers won't be allowed to chase people on foot if they run away during, for example, many traffic stops. Officers also can't initiate a chase if they're hurt, unaware of their location, unable to communicate, or lose their radio or gun. Now, some of that is for officer safety, but it's mostly a direct result of the deaths of 13-year-old Adam Toledo and 22-year-old Anthony Alvarez, who were both armed in separate incidents when they ran from Chicago police in March 2021 and were both fatally shot after pursuits. But there's a price to pay for this change in policy. Just a few weeks ago in the show, we told you about Washington State, where now hundreds of drivers are just refusing to stop for officers when they turn on the lights a direct result of a new bill which says police officers can't give chase unless they have reasonable suspicion the driver is impaired or the driver committed a Class A violent crime or sex crime. So now they know if they're wanted on a more serious crime or are committing one, run. There'll be no consequences usually. But joining me now is someone who disagrees with me, Chicago-based attorney Arturo Haregi, who is with the Pilsen Law Center, who advocated for the policy. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right, tell me what I'm getting wrong. Well, I think the premise of your opening statement, uh, I do happen to disagree with because in the city of Chicago, we had a history where police officers were getting into a lot of trouble uh, injuring innocent people when they started uh, a chase for misdemeanors, uh, the Chicago Tribune conducted an investigation indicating that over 80% uh, of people that were chased by police officers were severely injured. So what happens when someone gets injured? There's a lot of litigation. When you don't have any standards or procedures, uh, the city and the citizens of the city of Chicago end up picking up the tab when there's litigation. Uh, and there has been some major litigation as a result of the mistakes that police officers have made throughout the years. Look, you know, it is, this is the result of a policy from cooperation with the community, attorneys, uh, the attorney general's office, and many other entities that worked on this. We had plenty, we had at least three major meetings. Mm -hmm with the Chicago Police Department, and they were receptive to some of the changes that we made. So this is a joint effort. This is nothing that is being shoved down anyone's throats. And well, some uh, of we it makes, believe well, that this is a step in the right direction. Well, some, some, of it, uh, some of it makes sense. But would you at least, can we at least agree that there's a price to pay? Meaning some people who are engaged in, wanted for very serious crimes are going to now get away as a result of this new policy? Well, you know, no policy is perfect. We understand that. Right, so there's a price uh, to pay. I'll you that. Right, so we'll agree, we Fair can enough. at least agree there is a price to pay, right? And so the question becomes the balance, right? What, what is the cost? What is the price? Is it worth it, right? And so it just seems to me sometimes in these discussions, it's lost the reality that the vast majority of people who are running are running for a reason. Now, some people run just because they're scared. Okay, fair enough. But there are a lot of people who are running because they're bad guys, right? They've done something much worse than they're suspected of. And that's how police can do what they do, which is they start investigating something smaller and it leads to a much bigger arrest. Well, Dan, but as you know, we have the Constitution and before you can arrest or stop someone, you have to have some type of reasonable belief right. that the person has done something wrong, that right. they've committed a crime or they're about to commit a crime. Right. So the policy is straightforward in some regards in that for the first time in the history of the city of Chicago, we have a police officer now has procedures. They will have training as to what and under what circumstances they are supposed to engage in a, in a, in a foot pursuit. Now, this is for the safety of the person that is being pursued, the police officer, 
in the people that are around them. I will give you an example. Three years ago, approximately, a police officer pulled out, started to chase a person that had a broken mirror. Mm -hmm. In a chase in a densely populated neighborhood in Little Village in the city of Chicago. The person that is being chased yeah. lost control of the vehicle, ended up killing an innocent man. Right. So, Why should in that situation in a saturated yeah. neighborhood, uh, should police officers be allowed to chase someone when it was just a simple misdemeanor, well, someone that look, had a broken mirror. Car chases are, are something that are debated department by department, right? As you know, each department around the country has different policies when it comes to when do they engage in, in car pursuits because there are particular dangers. They do have to balance the True. costs and benefits of that. Foot pursuits are something different, and it seems to me that the notion that suddenly foot pursuits are off limits. I mean, now all these criminals know if I'm, if I'm pulled over for something relatively minor, the one thing I know I'm going to do is I'm going to run. <laughs> I'm going to run because I know they can't chase me. You'll agree that they're going to know that now, right? Well, conceivably, yeah, they will know that. Yeah. But the reality of it is that at the end of the day, look, for policing to work in a major city like Chicago, where we have the diversity that we have, basically a third of the population is white, one third black, one third Latino, and you know, a significant Asian population, there has to be an understanding. The police has to work hand in hand with the community. If there is no trust between the police officers and the community, it doesn't work. Right. It's and, just as simple as that. And, and when you treat people with a level of dignity and respect, yeah. you know, it's all going to and end up. Would look, you say the same? Wait, 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 wait. Would you say the same thing should apply to the way that the community treats the police, though? I mean, you say the community that about treating people with respect. How about people treating the police officers with some respect when they're pulled over, answering questions, simply not resisting, dealing with what, whatever's being dealt with? Is that respect on the part of the community in terms of the relationship you're talking about? It's, it's a two-way street. It has to okay. work both ways. So I, if you want to be treated with respect, you have to treat all yeah, the I people agree. with respect. I agree. And, and, and look, there is, there is a long history in Chicago police yeah. here, as you know. I know. Uh, and, and it's not a very good history. So it's going to take well, some time for people, for the police to regain that trust. But as long, this is a joint product. It is not a perfect policy. You know, we still have to see how it's going to work out. I got it. I got it. But uh, I appreciate the fact that we can have this kind of conversation because it's important that at least you recognize, as I do, that there's a price to pay for this. That as a result of it, because some people will say, it's not a price. It's it. And so there's a price. There's a price that the city of Chicago is going to pay for this. We shall see if it ends up being worthwhile. I think it's dangerous. I understand the position you're taking. And I truly appreciate your time today. Arturo, thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.